Jen, how are you? Hey, I'm great, Keith. How are you? Good, good. May I get a hug? Good, yes. Great, 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 great. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I want to have you on the show for some time since we started to do the Mayo Clinic podcast. So thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me. Good. How do you feel? Wonderful. Good. You nervous? I'm really not. Not with you sitting next to me. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> that's, true. that's real nice. You're a rock star. <laughs> so are you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so I met Jen. Uh, probably three or four weeks ago, and it was just a great meeting. I felt instantly connected, mm -hmm. uh, and we share a lot of the same values and rituals for how we live our lives. And so I uh, just felt a lot of great positive energy and synergy there. So Jen, why don't you introduce yourself to our audience? You know, what do you do at Mayo and, uh, and some of your other interests? Great. So I'm a physician assistant at Mayo Clinic Arizona. I've been there almost 15 years. And then on the side, I also have um, a health coaching business, which mostly I focus on nutrition. Right. So I love Mayo. Like I'm all yeah, in. Too. <laughs> you too? Yeah. I love Mayo. Yeah. Uh, so, well, how do you uh, how do you like what you do at Mayo? You know, I love what I do at Mayo. Um, I feel very fortunate to be in the position I'm in. I work in the pre-op clinic, and I okay. see patients before they go to surgery. And so part of what I do is just make sure that they know what's going to happen and then part of what I do is medical clearance and then part of it is also just some very, there's some um, maybe emotional connection that we, that we form at that time too because a lot of people come in and understand why they're very anxious and maybe upset, maybe they just got a new diagnosis of cancer or something like that. So it's, I feel like it's a very, it's, a, it's a, a wonderful place to be and I feel very blessed to be at that point in people's lives before they go into surgery. Well, I have to tell you just from a personal experience uh, how important someone cool. like you would be to me. <laughs> uh, I've never, uh, fortunately, had to have surgery, mm -hmm. but I had had to go in for some dental work, and whew, my pain threshold, low. <sighs> very, very low. <laughs> no, dental so, surgery hurts. So it's very low, and so uh, if they're calm and they try to make sure that I feel at ease, it goes a long way <laughs> with how I, you know, sit in the chair. Uh, so you really are important to everyone who comes in to comes comes in for surgery. Oh. Oh. I mean, I'm sure you heard that. I, I've heard that. Thank you. That's very nice. But but, but but she's so humble and she's so <laughs> modest. But you've heard that, right? Like you have a calming influence. Oh, good, good. I hope so. I <laughs> well, hope good. So. Good. Now, in your other interest in which you help uh, people with health coaching, uh, particularly with their nutrition, mm -hmm. uh, what satisfaction do you get out of that? You know, I think I wasn't, I mean, I was an adult before I realized the importance of nutrition just on our everyday health. And so um, for me, just being able to share some of the best studies about nutrition and then helping people either prevent disease or just get stronger or even sometimes reverse right. some chronic diseases like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, type 2 diabetes, obesity. So a lot of diseases and ailments can be actually reversed with great nutrition. Yeah, and 80% wow. of them could be prevented through great nutrition and wow. exercise. Right, right. So, Wow, yeah. okay. So do you find people to be really receptive to it or it all depends on uh, where they are in their lives. Totally depends <laughs> on where they are, right? So, you know, if I just try to voice this on somebody, they may or may not be receptive, depending on where they are. The people who come to me for coaching have sought me out, so right. obviously they are very ready to change, usually very, you know, motivated and enthusiastic. You know, one of the things that was hard for me in the early going was, when even when people would come to me and want support mm -hmm. uh, with their health and fitness goals, uh, if someone chose to discontinue that journey mm -hmm. at that point in their lives and go back to old behaviors and habits, I just kind of take it personal. Like I let them down or I didn't do enough or I wasn't uh, inspiring enough or persuasive enough. And one of my friends told me, he's like, you know, Keith, you're not going to help and save everyone. Not everybody's open right. or ready. Uh, and so you can't take it personal. If you just help one person, right. then you've made a difference. Was it hard for you to, uh, you know, when you see people, like you're like, this will really, really make a difference in your life, and then not uh, take it, you know, was that hard for you right. in the beginning? 
You know, I think it, it is on some level. Anytime someone rejects some awesome message that you have, right? <laughs> right, right. But I think one thing I learned in PA school was that it takes almost 20 times of someone telling someone else they should quit smoking before that person actually might be open to the message. Wow. So the first 19 times they hear it from a variety of very persuasive, well-meaning people, you know, the seed just hasn't been able to germinate yet. So okay. the seed got planted, but no sunshine, <laughs> no rain on it. So that's how I feel sometimes if someone says, you know what, this was great, but I just don't want to go any further in this. I'll just say, okay, the seed is there, you know. Oh, so hopefully someone else. Man, hold on, you just, right you just gave me a little gift there. <laughs> I'll take it out on. Like, seriously, may I use that? Please. Okay, I like it. I like, remember the seed is there. No, it's there, okay, right? Great, so, yeah. And then, you know, a year later, they're going to run into you and say, I've been wanting to do this thing. And then, okay. you know, you pour some water on it. So. Oh, wow. Man. Some sunshine. Some I love I, I love your way. I mean, I wish you guys could be here right now because her positivity and her energy, like I knew the show was going to be great when she stepped on set because of that kind of energy, that goodness. You can just feel it from Jen. Uh, I got another question for you. Okay. This is uh, kind of diving a little deep, but uh, I'd like to know what lessons and experiences uh, have had a big impact on who you are today. Mm, that's a good one. <laughs> um, well, as far as, um, you know, we talked a little bit about my background. I think as far as, you know, the kind of person that I hope I am in the world. Um, so my, I love your, when you, when I heard one of your podcasts where you talked about how you say, is this my best? Right. Am I doing my best? I love that. Uh, thank you. I have a similar question, or not question, but a thing that I say to myself is to be the love I want to see in the world, right? I so, like that. So I kind of stole that from Gandhi, <laughs> who says be the change. Actually, I, was, I did a, like, a little deep dive into Gandhi's work, and uh -huh. he didn't actually say that. But he said something kind of similar, but okay. in a lot more eloquent and like in a whole paragraph. Right, right. <laughs> and so <laughs> but, they just kind of summed yeah, it up. Yeah, they just kind of summed it up and then they put quote marks around okay. it. But, um, but yeah, I try to just be the love that I want to see in the world, right? Right. Um, and even when like someone isn't loving me <laughs> or right. is maybe like spewing expletives at me, like <laughs> I just try to say like, am I being the love? And yeah, so, yeah, exactly. Especially in those yeah. moments, right? Right, exactly. Yeah, those are the most challenging. Right. So what were, some of the, what were some of the, you know, experiences? that happen, you know, maybe something happened in childhood, uh, you know, I know you're, uh, you're totally into fitness, so mm -hmm. when did that start? Mm -hmm. How did that start? Yeah, so that did start in childhood, um, and for, well, actually, a story just came to mind. Do tell. <laughs> early, early, um, this is about being the love, and then I'll get into the fitness question, yes. too. So, I remember when I was 12 years old, I was in seventh grade, and um, I had a, a friend and we weren't like best best friends but we were friendly um she was super popular i was not popular <laughs> and she was a cheerleader and she was super nice and we were in a lot of classes together and that's why we were friendly and um one monday morning we all came to school and she wasn't there and our principal came in and said that she had um drank too much over the weekend mm -hmm. she'd actually gotten alcohol poisoning had to go into the hospital, was admitted to the hospital, was like still in the hospital, wow. you know, from drinking too much. She was at like some party with like high schoolers. Right, and, and, and this is when you were 12 we years old. We were 12 old. years old. Like I knew alcohol existed, but <laughs> right. I wasn't even curious about it. Yet, right, 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 right. And so, you know, the, the, the mood around school was kind of like, oh, you know, this is a terrible kid, and why did she make such horrible decisions? Like, right. you know, and um, very much blaming her yeah, really exactly. you know, blaming this 12 year old I know, which right? now that I'm 44 I look at her and I think like this this poor kid I right yes. like she's 12 years old I mean at the time I was 12 too so I was just like yeah I guess she's making bad decisions yeah, right 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 so, everybody blame shifting left right, and right. Yes. right? Mm -hmm. exactly so I remember coming back to school and so you know the principal tells us this and then they're like oh and she's not going to be on the cheerleading team anymore because cheerleaders don't act like that and wow. You know, and then I remember I went home and I was telling my parents about this and then they said, you know, like, well, what's going on in her life? Like, and, you know, I remember saying, well, I know her parents are getting divorced and I know she's been having kind of a tough time, like going between house and house, you know, right. and that. And they were, and I was like, but don't worry, I am not going to be friends with her anymore because I know that that's like, we shouldn't act like that. You right, know? right. 
And I remember my mom just looked at me kind of horrified. Right. And she just She's said, like, you're getting the wrong message from this. Right, exactly. You know, but look at all the message you're getting from everyone else right. about judgment. And, exactly. you, know, she, you know, she's making bad choices, so we can't support her. Right, yeah. exactly. And I just, I totally internalized that. I was like, oh, yeah, I don't support her either. Right. You know, I'm out. Right. And, and so, so what did your mom say? Yeah, my mom just said, well, you know, honey, I think this is a time that you might want to think, like, if it were you and all your friends went away... Maybe you would really appreciate having someone just be kind to you, right? You got that lesson at 12 years old. I got it old. at 12. <laughs> I know. Thanks, I love Mom. You. I love Mom. I know. She's Mom great, right? Mom is great. Yeah. Yeah, and she's, like, and she's like, I know you. I know you're not going to start drinking heavily right, right now. Right. I'm not, she wasn't worried about that, right. you know, but she just said, she's like, yeah, baby. maybe you could just be nice to her and be around for her when wow. she comes back, you know? So when she came back, did it influence how you showed up for her? It did. Yeah, wow. it did. It what a gift. Good. And I'm sure, I mean, I can tell that you are a really great friend. So that life lesson at 12 years old is stuck with you all these years. You know, that was one of them. That was one of them that really shaped me, I wow. think. Yeah. Wow. What's another one? Uh, let's see. Um, I'll have to think on that. Okay. <laughs> well, tell second. me about fitness. How'd okay. you get, so you're fit. <laughs> okay. I mean, you are in shape. Yeah. So where did that start? So that started in childhood, too. Um, I think I mentioned to you off camera that I had two health nuts for parents. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I was very fortunate in that way because, you know, I, I don't think I was naturally that interested in um, exercise right. or being fit, but they really kind of gave me the, <laughs> the push toward that, whether I wanted it or not. Right. So it was not negotiable? <laughs> it was not negotiable. <laughs> Yeah, and then, you know, as I got into college, and, you know, because all through school, of course, I had PE, and I was on some, you know, teams, not any, not anything competitive, I'm definitely, I don't see myself as an athlete, per se, but, you know, did a little intramural, and then, um, when I was in college, of course, then finally, I had freedom, and I didn't have to do any of this, right? Right, right. I was so happy. <laughs> <laughs> like, mom and dad, I'm not under the roof anymore, right. I can do my own thing, exactly, exactly. <laughs> which is nothing, <laughs> right? Which is nothing. But then, you know, I found that it was such a great stress relief, so I would ride my bike. I went to a, okay. a big campus. So, all right. So you found that one of the benefits of exercise that you may have not appreciated when you were younger, when you get to college, stress relief. Right, right. Mm. Interesting. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Right? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, I had to ride my bike all over the place. I had to rollerblade from, like, class to class. And then I would find, oh, maybe I'll just go a little longer on these rollerblades, even though I don't have to. Right. You know, just take 30 minutes and go outside. I mean, were you aware of your mood being elevated and the stress dissipating? Were you aware of it I while you were in the moment? You were. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. So was it at that point you stopped, you know, maybe you didn't look at exercise as something that you had to do, right. but it was more of like, I'm choosing to do this because it's good for me. It makes right. me feel good. Right. Well, I was definitely putting it together, you know, that it did make me feel better. Okay, so good. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Okay. So that was influenced. So your parents were super active. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. And they still are. They're in their mid seventies now and, and they still, still exercise every morning. That's their, their routine. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. They're great role models. <laughs> I know, I know. I think, yes, I'm very fortunate. Yeah. Okay, so uh, we also talked off camera about uh, you know me being vegetarian, you being vegan, mm -hmm. how I came to it, and I came to it because of what I thought it could help me in terms of being in better shape, right. you know, physically. Yeah. And you came, you came to it from a more conscious, more compassionate space, uh, you know, becoming vegan. So talk a little bit about that. Okay. And then um, I'd love to hear more about your journey into it too. Okay. So, yeah. So I think I was I was a teenager when I first started getting interested in it, and um, you know, at that time where I lived in Chicago, you know, it was, <laughs> it was tough. It was tough to be a little bit. Um, well, I would say. Yeah, even to be a little bit into vegetarianism yeah, I mean, was it's, there. It's, it's, a, it's a deep dish and yeah. uh, meats. <laughs> yeah, and this was the early 1980s. So just, you know, at that time, soy milk was brown and chunky. <laughs> <laughs> and it came in like one of those, um, you know, like sterile seal containers. <laughs> wow. Like on a shelf. And that was it. There was one brand. <laughs> And so now, I mean, you go to the store now, you go uh, to, like, fries here. It's changed. And, yeah, it's amazing. I mean, you go to, like, regular supermarkets right. and find not one soy milk, but, like, a whole bunch. You can get, yeah. like, ten different kinds of plant-based milk That's now. That's amazing. Totally amazing. Yeah, so anyways, it was a little tricky then, and I was a bit wobbly. So um, how old were you at, the, at that point where you 
chose to go down that road of yes. becoming, uh, you know, vegan. So I was, well, I was 13 when I wanted to do it, but wow. my pediatrician, who we all adored, he was a wonderful human being, um, actually thought it would be unsafe for me, which we now know isn't true. Right. In fact, Dr. Spock, one of the most esteemed pediatricians in the world, um, before he passed away mm -hmm. in his 90s, um, not that long ago, he wrote his last book, that baby and child care book, which he's famous for writing the last edition actually says that kids should not have any exposure to meat or dairy. But that's wow, really? the healthiest way for them to live and grow up. Yep. So things have changed for <laughs> sure. But I think more people are reading the evidence now. More people are seeing the science Absolutely. behind it. You know, and that was what changed Dr. Spock's opinion too. So exactly. So your parents were okay with it as long as the pediatrician thought it was a good idea for you? Right. Okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. So um, so kind of little funny story. So, you know, my parents were like, you know, they just, I mean, they wanted me to do it, but they also were nervous because, you know, like any parent, you want your kid to be right. healthy and give them all the advantages you can, right? Exactly. So, um, it was just by accident that one of the people that my dad worked with um, was a Seventh-day Adventist, which is a religion that tends to follow a more vegetarian diet. Uh -huh. And that person was like, oh, she can be strong and healthy. I'll give you some <laughs> recipes. It's going to be all right. <laughs> Thank goodness for that person. Yes, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So he was really, like, he swooped in and saved the day. So finally when I turned 16, then everyone was on board. But, you know, I was done growing and then everything was going to be all right. And I could try this crazy experiment for, like, six months. And if I didn't <laughs> die of protein deficiency, <laughs> that, you know, then we could keep going. Um, so it's now 28 years later. Haven't died of protein deficiency yet. <laughs> right, right, right. You're still, you're still going strong. Right, right. So, uh, you know, what's, what's interesting about, um, you know, your story is that, you know, you came to it, you know, just because you wanted to be uh, healthy and you wanted to be responsible with your health. I came through it from a totally aesthetic standpoint, you know. Uh, I just thought, hey, I can be leaner. Mm -hmm. I can look like I'm in even better shape. And so... I'll try it then. And I had this guy, a good friend of mine, who was a vegetarian uh, when I first met him. But what I also noticed about him, he was super calm all the time mm -hmm. and peaceful. I don't know if there is a connection or a correlation, uh, but I always just remembered that about him. And we went to a restaurant uh, here locally when just, I, was I, I just, I was out of college. So we went to a restaurant locally called Pita Jungle. Mm -hmm. And we sat down and we were in Tempe. And we sit down there, and uh, I knew he was vegetarian. I said, uh, he ordered, he said, I'll take the thousand beans. I was like, what? What are you having? Like, any chicken on that? Any? He's like, no, a thousand beans. I said, what is, a, what is a thousand beans? He said, it's a thousand beans. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I saw this guy eat this meal of just beans. I couldn't even wrap my mind around that. Like, how is this guy doing it? But we continued to work out, and he continued to get in better and better shape, you know. Uh, and he just, his health improved, his fitness improved. I was like, you know, it just blew my mind because I thought vegetarians or vegans just kind of, they'd walk outside a strong wind would just carry them away, you know, <laughs> because they had no muscle tone. Right. Uh, they were not, you know, solid. And I was just so wrong. And so that exposed me to it. But it wasn't until uh, six or seven years later again, for vanity reasons that I actually, you know, went down that road. And I saw this guy one time at a gym who was eating a plant-based diet. And before, I kind of minimized, you know, him because I didn't think he was that strong. I didn't think he was that fit, but he switched his nutrition and became really plant-based. And one day he walked into the, he's walked to the gym and said, Keith, you know, hey, you know, are you interested in that diet I was telling you about? I was like, I'm good. Then he lifted up his shirt and I saw that six pack. I was like, Give me a call. <laughs> the next week I was on a diet and like you, I said, I'll give this a shot. I'll see if it you know, works, if mm -hmm. I'm still here. And I was dating someone at the time that, that wasn't too supportive. You know, she's like, well, what are we going to eat now? I'm like, you can eat whatever you want. I'm just giving this two weeks to see if it works. If it does, I'll continue. And so that was kind of uh, uh, straining uh, for the relationship because she wasn't very uh, open to it. And I, I reassured her that she didn't have to do anything different, like cook your meals the way you want to cook them. You don't have to cook two separate meals. I'll make my own. I'll find my way through this. And uh, that was back in 2004, so that's 14 years later and going strong. And most recently, you and Dr. Driver Dunkley have inspired me to really 
you know, become vegan. Like, and I, you know, I hit you with a ton of questions when I met you, and I blitzed her with a ton of questions too, uh, because the only uh, I eat fish once or twice a month. But other than that, you know, I was I was there. So one last question. So there's vegetarians and there's vegans, but not every vegetarian and vegan is healthy. Right. Okay. So tell me about your journey regarding becoming a healthy mm -hmm. vegan. Yeah, that's a great question. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. And so, and you know, the thing I don't, the thing I don't love about the term vegan is that it just tells you what I don't eat. Right. But it really doesn't tell you what I do eat, right? Right, right. So I could be eating beer and donuts and still be vegan. Um, but, you know, for a lot of people, um, the term vegan also has some health connotation, mm -hmm. which it does for me. And so I eat a whole food plant-based diet. So there's no beer and no donuts right? <laughs> in my diet. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what I'm eating a lot of is lentils, be a thousand beans, right? <laughs> sweet potatoes, broccoli, quinoa. Those are some of my staples mm -hmm. that I eat a lot of. Um, so I think it's, I think it's important for people to, if you know, I guess for me, I prefer to just say I'm a plant eater, right. you know, than vegan because I, I just, like it. you I, know, I just keep it, may I? <laughs> no, you said too? Please. That's the second thing. All right. The second one, seed germinating. That's awesome. And then this one. Okay. All right. Well, you've already influenced me. I'm going to talk about the finger tapping in a okay. second. Okay. 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 Well, great. So, so no, that, that really helps a lot too, uh, is, you know, the, the, uh, distinction between just being plant-based, uh, vegan or vegetarian, but are you a healthy one of those is right. I think really, really key. Right. Okay. So I'm going to shift gears a little bit because we talked about your fitness and we've talked a little bit about your nutrition. Uh, I'm really big on daily rituals mm -hmm. to help me be my best yeah. and, and past podcasts, I've described a little bit about what those are for me. So my question to you is what are your daily rituals? Those things you do every day to help you be your best in your profession in your personal life, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, what are the things that you do? Great. Um, so I'll start with my newest one, which is first thing when I wake up. Okay, I like it already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm counting on my fingers, what I'm grateful for, and I got that from you when we just talked. Yeah. Thank you. So yeah, and my friend Tim taught me, and so I'm glad we're paying it forward. How do you like that? I love that one. That is such a great way to start the day. You know, uh, you're going to make my list today. <laughs> Just so you know, you will be on my list You're today. on my list too. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, like, what I found was is when, you know, worry and anxiety or uh, obsessive thinking mm -hmm. tries to come up, you know, especially in the morning, uh, is when I found it surfaces the most, that when I root myself, you know, in the present moment, it's by doing my gratitude. It brings me right to the here and now. Mm -hmm. What does it do for you? Yeah, really the same. Like it's a great way to be in the here and now. I think it's a great way to start the set the tone for the day. No doubt. You know, because oftentimes if the alarm goes off, I'll start thinking like, oh, today's this day. I have to get in for this meeting, and then this is going to happen, and then that, and I'm already in the in the present. Well, right. not in the present. Sorry, in the future. In the future right? Right. right. Already thinking about it. And so, you know, I think that's a great way to just get really grounded before you even. Absolutely. Get going. I totally agree. Okay, so what what else is uh, on your ritual? Okay, so there's that, and then um, usually first thing I do um, when I as soon as you know I'm out of bed is I get my 30 minutes of exercise in. I love it, <laughs> and, and you do this every day. I do. It's so awesome. Yeah. So you know how you and um, Rick and Tim. Tim have talked about your non-negotiables. Yes. Like for me, just like brushing my teeth is a non-negotiable before I leave. 30 minutes exercise is also non-negotiable. Non-negotiable. Because it really changes my mood. And you know, like I always think about days mood-wise from a scale of one to 10. So like one being like worst day ever, like wanna end it. And, <laughs> and 10 being like best day of my life. Like, you know, um, you know, I think sometimes a five or six day can turn into like a seven or eight day just if I like do these rituals, you know? So even if preach, <laughs> preach, <laughs> preach. So even if it's, there's something coming up, I'm not looking forward to, or I'm thinking like speak. Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Right? right. Right. No doubt. Yeah. It turns a five or a six to a seven or eight minimum, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So the day, the events aren't going to change, but just your outlook, right? Can you get a little better? You cook. You cook. <laughs> okay. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. But you're absolutely right. 
Oh, it, it, it changes everything, and I know it does for me. Uh, you know, one thing I uh, am always, you know, uh, amazed by, I continue to be, you know, just surprised by every single time that it happens, although it happens every time, is that if I exercise, whatever challenge or problem that I have, after exercise, I see completely different. Right. You know, I have right. a plan, a solu a possible solution, yes. and I feel really empowered yes. post-exercise. Yes. So same with you? Yes, same with me. Yeah, yes. my head always feels clearer. Every time, every yeah. time. So, okay, so we got gratitude. Yeah. We've got your 30 minutes of exercise. Yeah. Anything else you do? So, and I was going to say, for me, the 30 minutes, the reason I do that is because it's very sustainable for me. Right. You know, like when I was younger, I used to always try, oh, I want to be an hour in the gym before work. But then if I would, you know, wake up a little late or was going a little slowly and I couldn't get to it, then I would just throw the whole day out, mm -hmm. you know? Whereas 30 minutes, like, there's just no right. way that I can't make 30 minutes. So it's really right? important that, so the message to people that may be in an audience who don't have exercise as a daily ritual is to make it something that they can sustain, right? Right. For a lifetime. Exactly. Okay, and, exactly. That's what the, and that's what the daily ritual is about. Lifetime is the journey. Right, right, totally. Great. Um, and you know, I didn't know about To Be Re until I just met you, and now I'm thinking I might need to actually switch up this 30 minutes because <laughs> your classes sound so amazing. Oh, uh, that's fun. Yeah, I mean, so. with your personality, your energy, like it'd be great, you know, if you checked it out. I mean, yeah. just because of what you bring. Like, you are a person from your smile to uh, your energy to how you speak, how you serve, you brighten a room, huh. you know? You contribute to every space you come it's into. It's just my shirt. It's really bright. It's more than the shirt. It's <laughs> more than the shirt, I promise you. Okay, so we've got, okay, the exercise, the gratitude. Um, what else is on your list that you do? Okay, so then, so I'm back from my little workout in the morning. Usually then I do oatmeal for breakfast. So your nutrition. <laughs> my nutrition. That's part, of your daily, that's part of your daily ritual. Right? Yes. Yeah. So I usually do um, oatmeal in the Instant Pot, okay. and that takes about five minutes. And so I plug that in, and that's when I do my five minutes meditation. Love it. Just love it. clear the hat a little further. I love right? it. Right? Yes. Yep. Again, set the tone. Right? It's going to be a peaceful day. Right. No matter what life throws at us, we're going to surf. We're going to learn to right. surf. I love it. Can't stop the waves. You can learn how to surf. <laughs> exactly. John Kevin's in, one of my favorite authors. Yes. Mm -hmm, no doubt. Yeah. So um, I do that. And then usually when I'm eating, I have a favorite app. Okay. It's Dr. Gregor's Daily Dozen. Not heard of this. Okay. This will be in the show notes. Woo! Okay. Tell me, tell yeah. us about it. Free app. Okay. And it goes along perfectly with rituals because it's just a little checklist. So you just pull it up every day. It's a blank, a blank sheet, and it's got your 12 things that you need to do every day. So 11 of them are food, and then one of them is exercise. And so it's just got little check boxes, and it's just, it's a very simple app. I like it though. Right? Um, I heard that it's actually going to be upgraded pretty soon. It'll still be free, but it's going to be a little fancier, but right now it's just this little check I like it. I love it. And because I look at it and I think, okay, how am I going to get all these things in, right? So it's all the things that the evidence shows us. Right. Are, you get the most bang for your buck out of, right? So like berries, flax seeds, cruciferous vegetables. So when I go, when I'm sitting there in the morning eating my oatmeal, I'm like, oh, I should put some berries on this. Oh, I should put some nuts on this. I should put some flax seeds. So I'm checking off my boxes, and then I'm thinking, what's lunch going to be like? What's dinner going to be like? How am I going to get all these in for the day? And so you right? do at the beginning of the day. I do. And then so you bring mindfulness and presence to it. Right. To make sure that it happens. Right. I got to download this app. <laughs> I got to download this app, seriously. It's, because it's my great. friends, uh, like Amy, are always telling me, like, hey, listen, let's get some more vegetables there. I think this will be what does it. I love that. And you should listen to that friend, Amy. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> that's good advice. <laughs> okay, so okay, so you got your app, so now you got nutrition, mm -hmm. uh, you got the plan for the day, you know what to make sure that you incorporate. Man, you're just crushing it. <laughs> I mean, you got your exercise, your gratitude list, you got your meditation down, and now you're going through uh, your checklist for the day to help you be right. at your best. Yeah, so another thing that I love to do in the morning with a long, so I usually start eating oatmeal while I'm sitting there, kind of thinking right. about how I'm going to get all these little um, foods in for the day. 
But then another thing I love to do is to have a huge green smoothie in the morning because it's okay. really filling. Right. And then you get all this water in in the morning, which is great because, you know, when you're sleeping, you get a little dehydrated. Right. And, you know, when you go to the gym or do whatever you're doing, obviously you're going to get a little dehydrated. So just a big green smoothie. So I'll use like maybe a couple cups of uh, fresh kale. I'll throw some berries in there. I'll throw some pineapple, some mango, anything that will sweeten the bitter of, right. the, of the dark leafy greens. Right. right. And then just blend it off with some ice and water. And then it's usually like maybe, I usually make like four or five, six cups of it. And wow. then just, I drink that like really fast as I'm getting ready in the morning. I'm just drinking green smoothie. Yep. And then. Hold on, you finish it all. I do. All four, all four cups. Mm -hmm. Wow, you crushed it's it. It's a lot. You're crushing it. <laughs> it's a commitment. Yeah, no <laughs> doubt. No doubt. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm down. Okay. I'm down. <laughs> All right. Yes. You play a big game <laughs> when it comes to your greens, no doubt. <laughs> big kale game. <laughs> That's right. I love it. Man. My so, nickname is Kale at work. Is it? <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'm feeling it. May I call you that too? Please. All right. <laughs> I'm a more comfortable. <laughs> okay. That's right. That's right. We're past the formalities of, of Keith and Jen. That's we're, right. We're young Call me Kale. Okay. I got it. All right. I'm on it. It's, it's, it's done. <laughs> Okay, so man, so so this just sets you up for your day. So you got these rituals in place. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, did we cover them all? We yeah, we got those. And then as soon as I get to work, as I'm walking in, um, as you know, Mayo is very beautiful. The way the landscaping is. is when you walk in, it's so pretty. So and there's always trees and there's birds. And so what I do when I'm walking in in the morning is I always do some mindful breathing. Mm -hmm. So because I used to be before I started doing this, mm -hmm. I would be thinking like. Oh, I gotta see if this email came back. I gotta check on these labs. I gotta, okay, as soon as I get in the door, I gotta check, check, you know, my mind is already going again, focusing on the future. You know, I'll be mailed this week and guess what? I, guess how I'm gonna walk in <laughs> with mindful breathing. Nice. I mean, look at what you're doing today. I mean, like, you, you're changing up my game. I'm like, I have a daily ritual list of about five. You just added six and seven to it. Thank you. Like, seriously, you're I'm, I'm grateful. You're welcome. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's right. So, uh, so you do mindful breathing going in. Right. Okay. And so as soon as I step out of the car, I hear those birds. I'm looking at the trees. I'm just doing my breathing. It's such a peaceful way to walk into the building. No doubt. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I'm still kind of new to the campus, so I'm like, Where's this building at? Right. You know, I still and, do that too. <laughs> yeah. So, but as I walk in before I get into, the, you know, because this is, a, this is quite the walk from the employee mm -hmm. parking lot, and so I can definitely use that time in a more uh, effective way. Wow. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So, how do your rituals help you both professionally and personally? So, I would say. I'd say the, the biggest thing that the rituals have done has just really helped me be more calm, be more present, and then again, just for me, a major mood booster too. So, um, you know, I feel like my mood can always be better, like right. for me. Right. Um, like That's kind of hard to just believe because your mood is on point. <laughs> well, I mean, I feel very lucky, especially today. Like, I, you know, woke up and said, yay, we get to do this podcast, you know. <laughs> awesome. But, you know, certainly there's times when it, it sinks. And so for me, just connecting to these rituals has really helped with Right. Mood and has ever been, like I went through a period in my life in which I dealt with some depression, mm -hmm. you know, with my financial planning career. Mm -hmm. uh, there were a couple of years during the 18 years that I was doing uh, in the industry that were very challenging. The market dropped significantly, you know, uh, portfolios were down, and I took that on, like I internalized that, and so I was pretty depressed for a while. Yeah. Uh, so, have you gone through a period of your life in which you've experienced any anxiety or worry or depression in which the daily rituals today uh, help you whenever, you know, life shows up mm -hmm. in a way that's less than ideal? Yeah, all of the above. Okay. <laughs> yes, and I think for me, um, and I tend to, I think you're probably like this too, but you know, we, when you're sensitive to other people's right. feelings too, mm -hmm. I think it can be very easy to have that affect your own mood. Right, take it on. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, whether it's something going on in the world, um, you know, that could be upsetting, or whether it's something that your friend just told you, something hard that happened to them. Right. You know, I think that that can be, there can be a source of comfort in having those those rituals to keep your... Absolute ground you. Yeah, ground you. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Wow. And so that helps you both personally and professionally, your rituals. It does, yeah. I can tell you too. Oh, no doubt. I yeah. mean, I can, 
I look at where I was in my life before, mm -hmm. and, and you know, and uh, and I was just kind of existing, you know. Yes. I think like most of the planet, yes. and, and that's a, isn't, that's not a judgment on most of the planet, but it's just an observation. Yes. You know, I see the things that you know can take people sideways, yeah. or that they can really kind of lose respect for the bigger picture. Definitely. Uh, and like traffic, like mm -hmm. you know. Traffic doesn't care if you're upset. Right. You know, people complain about the Arizona sun. Right. It's hot. Like, seriously, <laughs> right. your complaint about it doesn't change the temperature one bit. Right. And so just those simple things that waste of energy, uh, you know, I've really learned how to not do those things and also how to be really effective with how I use my time and what I choose to watch or listen to just really makes a difference. Yeah. And the daily rituals really, really keep me present to that. Yeah. So one more question for you. Yes. Okay, this question is, is what legacy or lasting contribution do you want to make, you know? It's a good one. <laughs> um, well, you know, I think in the big scheme of things, I would hope that maybe I could be of comfort to people when they need someone uh, to listen to them, um, just to be a shoulder. Um, I hope I leave the planet a little more peacefully than I found it. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, th those are probably my biggest ones. That's great. Yeah, how that's about great. You? Um, same thing, you know. I just want to contribute and serve, and uh, hopefully inspire other people to do the same. And uh, you know, I just want to—I just want to be peaceful. I want to bring peace and loving kindness to everyone I come in contact with. That's really what I want to do. Like is that, and so, uh, like you, I found the best way uh, to possibly achieve that is by being those things, mm -hmm. and the daily rituals help me do that. So, Jen, thank you for a fantastic show. Uh -huh. You were lights out, lights <laughs> out. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Great.